This video is sponsored by Skillshare. Okay, before I show you the actual footage from the movie, trust me, it looks nothing like the thumbnail, let me show you the end credits first. Yes, the credits. I have a problem with the credits. Because you see, this movie's credits are ripped from another movie, just with slight alterations to each person's name. Even the credits are a knockoff. Makes sense though, because there is no way in hell that this movie has this many artists behind it. That's the goddamn movie, people. Just suck it all in. This is the Autobots. Yes, it's actually called that, and it is, in my opinion, the most shameless Chinese movie ever made. The English title rips off the Transformers, the Chinese title and the character design copy cars of Pixar Studio fame. Part of the title is covered up, just so it looks even closer to the Pixar title. The fact that the poster bears more resemblance to Cars 2's poster than the actual film itself makes the intention very clear. Like many egregious cases of Chinese knockoffs, this movie was mocked around the world. CNN from the US reported on it, SET News from Taiwan made fun of it, Nippon TV from Japan investigated it. But there is one place where the reaction is often overlooked, at least in the West. How did Chinese filmgoers react to this? Today, let me tell you the story of the Autobots, from its on-screen hilarity to behind-the-scene drama, and yes, to domestic audience reception. Let me help you make sense of this madness and also peer into the side of Chinese pop culture you don't often hear about. This is the most shameless Chinese movie ever made. The story tells a 9-year-old engineer who wants to make the coolest, most badass smart car ever, but ends up making free cars, each with its own personality flaws. K1 is too restless, and also flirtatious for some godforsaking reason. Behold, the most annoying character introduction of all time. Does anyone feel dirty after that? I feel like I would be charged $6 per minute for hearing that voice on the phone. Anyway, K2 is too rigid in programming. Simon Yet would be proud. K3? I think he's supposed to be lazy, but he looks more like he's drunk up the ass. I would too if I was in this movie. Oh my god, this horny car needs to come the f down. Anyway, after the completion, the four decide to participate in a racing championship in hopes of winning the coveted poop shaped trophy. Thus begins a long and treacherously boring journey of training. And by training, I mean none of that. Bad weather? Upgrade. Potholes? Upgrade. Need someone to do chores? Upgrade. Got sick? So much new to this oversized love and slush. Finally, the big day came, and all of their hard works paid off. Cannon boss? Weather shoe upgrade. Potholes? Suspension upgrade. Traps? Household chore upgrade. And most importantly, with each other's help, they overcome the flaws. Cheated on by all four audience members in an epic slow motion finale, they won. And the movie just immediately ends. Yup, 20 seconds after they cross the finish line, credits. Oh well, this is a finale. In our video about Mulan, I made fun of the animators for creating a shoddy looking phoenix and tell them to sign up for Skillshare. God, I wish I saved that joke for this video instead. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. For the director of this film, I recommend Character Design Crash Course, Dynamic Design in 4 Steps, a beginner course for emerging cartoonists to come up with cough cough, original designs of their own. 
Other class topics include writing, editing, composting, and animation. Classes are concise, free, and affordable. Less than $10 a month with an annual subscription. The first 1,000 people to use the link in my description will get a free trial of Skillshare membership, so you can explore your creativity. All jokes aside, we all want 2021 to be a better year. And one of the best ways to make the year better is to make yourself better. So for real, I really do recommend giving Skillshare a try, especially their workshops, which encourage you to create something. The most important thing is to get started, right? So what are you waiting for? In a previous video of mine, I called Pure Hearts the worst Chinese movie ever made. While visually the Autobots is god awful, I still think Pure Hearts is the worst of the two. Mainly because the Autobots is at least coherent, but also it isn't actually a movie. Not really. The Autobots was a TV animation, and like many other cheap toddler shows around the world, no one really gives a shit about it. It also helps that the animation is so poorly made, it takes a second for you to realize who they are copying. The show was later stitched together into a feature film and pushed into theaters for a quick buck. The controversy didn't start until the theatrical poster came out, which in a way, is more of a knockoff than the movie itself. This similarity is, of course, immediately noticed by everyone. Nippon TV contacted the director for a comment, to which the director denied all accusations, claiming it is just learning from Disney. And this is where the crap shit begins. Understandably, Chinese social media users sided with Nippon TV on this. Unlike Pure Hearts, which was mostly mocked and made fun of, reviews for the Autobots were mostly of anger and frustration. Many called it shameful, some wished Pixar would sue them. In response, the director accused critics of being, quote, a new generation of traitors, siding with foreigners instead of supporting Chinese animation, and blamed everyone for the film's poor box office return. If you know about Disney, the number one rule is you do not piss off Disney. And as you would expect, the Autobots got sued. Facing a lawsuit, the director has the gall to claim that the Autobot is an independent creation and accuse Disney of abusing the legal system. While in the middle of a lawsuit, the director announced a sequel, which never materialized. Thank f And the kicker is, this film was pushed out allegedly as a way for the director to exploit a loophole in government fundings. With its production company based in Xiamen, a city with media production fund programs, this film is eligible for 255,000 yuan, or about 39,000 US dollars in funding. It's probably more than enough to recoup the production costs and then some. In the end, Disney won the lawsuit. What else do you expect? The news was reported by M Time, one of China's largest cinema network. The headline? Rejoice, the Autobots ruled as copyright infringement. What a sh show. Do you know Genshin Impact? Yeah, it's one of those games that came out riding the success of Breath of the Wild. I suspect a lot of people didn't realize that this is a Chinese made game, since made in China has a very negative connotation. The developer is likely aware of this too which is why this game has its title in Japanese instead of Chinese. Anyway, the reception of the game is... Wait, what the f***? She's so cute! Generally positive. After all, games that copy other games are nothing new. Ubisoft just released their own take on the same formula, and gamers are okay with it, as long as the product is good. But there is one place that really hates this game. Yeah. China. Now, you probably noticed that I haven't been very neutral in this video. That's because I, along with so many other Chinese artists and viewers, are not only angry at this film, but the entire industry of Chinese knockoffs. And that's a side of the story you don't often hear about. Mockbusters are not exclusively a Chinese phenomenon, far from it. Yet, when you hear the word knockoffs, your thoughts? And my thoughts are almost always the same. Of course it's China. It is the equivalent of hearing news of an anti-mask protest and going, of course it's America. 
as an American, you know it's not your fault, and you dislike these people just as much. But it frustrates you that that is what your fellow people are doing, and this is why Chinese filmgoers would rather side with the media that make fun of China than stand with the film that represents the worst of the Chinese creative industry. Chinese people, especially the urban, middle-class, educated people, are increasingly frustrated with Chinese knockoffs, partly due to this international perception. At the risk of sounding overly sensitive, here is a personal experience. To this day, people still comment under our Chinese sword video with the same joke: "Why are Chinese sword not as famous? Because they were made in China." It's so normalized. People don't think it is an insult anymore, despite the subtext being nothing good comes from China, and if something good is made in China, it will not be recognized as such, even by its own creators. But the main reason for our hatred is just that we are tired of seeing cheaters win. Guo Jingming, one of the most famous young writers in China, plagiarized most of his famous works. He was sued in 2003 by fellow writer Zhang Yu, whose work was plagiarized by Guo. Guo lost the lawsuit but refused to apologize. He went on to become a director, writing and directing the notoriously bad Tiny Times series, with the first film alone grossing 484 million yuan against its 45 million yuan budget. Similarly, Chinese screenwriter Yu Zheng was sued by famous author Cheng Yao for plagiarism. He lost the case, yet he remains one of the most prolific screenwriter in the industry. And this film grossed nearly five million yuan. Although the production company claims it has a 10 million yuan budget, I doubt that's the case. The public's frustration reached a boiling point recently. On December 31st, 2020. 15 years after Guo losing the case, he and Yu Zheng finally apologized publicly. Why? Because just nine days earlier, over 156 media personnel co-signed it an open letter calling for the boycott of plagiarists, in which these two butt wipes were named specifically. Almost immediately, Yu Zheng is edited out of a variety show he appeared in. And a new show he wrote is now postponed. It seemed like justice is finally being served. The comments under the apologies are not acceptance. It's not even rejoicing. Some expressed relief. Most are still angry. And now you know why Chinese people find this movie so infuriating. I hate the Autobots, and so do people in China. Because it stands as the most glaring symptom of the rotten core within the Chinese creative industry, an industry where it pays to be a cheater. There are so many artists in China, especially animators, who choose a life of hardship just to have a chance of pushing the Chinese animation industry forward. The director of Nerja graduated med school, yet instead of becoming a doctor, he decided to go into animation, self-taught. Because he loves the industry and wants to help make it better, he spent three years crafting his debut short film while living in poverty. He couldn't even afford internet at home. If he needed to go online, he had to go to his friend's house. Yet you are telling me that this creatively bankrupt face is the most popular writer in China, and this horny car made it into the theaters? Luckily, both the audience and the industry are changing. Nerja eventually became the highest-grossing animated film in China. Original films are being valued more and more, while copycats, even high-quality ones, are being called out. I sincerely hope the notoriety of the Autobots is a sign of change, that cheaters are being kicked out, that the truly passionate artists are finally getting the spotlight. Perhaps one day China can shed away the knockoff label and produce something truly loved. By people around the world, and hopefully next time they don't have to hide behind a Japanese name.